the very book that my local school librarian told me that was a crime not to read if I was a big fantasy reader. reader. The very book that just every single person told me to read, but I hadn't read. So, hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today, I have this awesome, epic fantasy book for you guys today. His Dark Materials Book 1, The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman himself. And well, let's get right on to what this book is about a girl named Lyra. And she lives in Oxford, alongside with scholars and teachers and professors and all of that. She is in a little bit of a different world than ours, with incredible magic and kind of technology. And in her world, there are things called demons that are not bad things, not as in the horned demon, the bad evil guys, as in demons are a part of their soul. That is usually the opposite gender of himself because, like, if I had a demon, it would be a female. And it can change into any shape until basically puberty. And yeah, they, they are an essential part of someone. And it's. So, one thing that I want to comment on this is that Philip Pullman doesn't just explain demons are a part of a human being. It is like not having. If you don't have a demon, it's not like having an eye or a body part. No, he shows this so naturally. And she produces, he produces Lyra's shock in seeing demons separated from, from the person as a gross thing, like a person has taken out her heart or something. And another one, when a demon is touched, it's a horrible violation of privacy. And that's just, I feel like Philip Pullman was a genius in explaining these tiny little details. And that's one thing that I wanted to take a hold of. Because I do want to be an author myself, and I always had problems. Like, I want to tell the reader something, but I don't necessarily know how to make it natural. And one day, as a little bit of challenge, she sneaked into a room where Lord Asriel, her uncle, was holding a meeting with the Masters of Oxford. There, he wanted funding for, a, for his expedition in the Arctic. And he had seen in the Arctic, in the aura, a different world, a different world, and she, he wanted more, like he wanted money, basically, so that he could go into that world, I guess. And he talks about dust, this mysterious thing that streams down from the stars and seems to pull around adults. And this world is in control by the church, and they are not very nice people at all. They talk, anything, any scientific discovery that doesn't go with well, the Bible, it's just, nope, that's heresy. Of course, literally, you know, scientific, dis um, you know, Galileo, the earth is not in the center of the world. One of those things, he was, you know, trapped in prison, almost executed. And yeah, I mean, the earth is round, for example, that was another heresy thing. But we discovered that the earth is actually round and it was just a misinterpretation. Anyway. Basically, the church is in power, and they're kind of, ty they're kind of a tyrant, and they don't want to talk about other worlds because in the Catholic Church, there's only three worlds: the spiritual world of heaven and hell, and of course, our world, the mortal realm where we live in. That's not how it works, apparently. So great. And meanwhile, Lyra, while in the closet and overhearing things, hears about in the north Doctor Grumman's death and something about dust, and she's very interested about it, and that's pretty much it. Then she goes on to her normal life without thinking about dust. Then, then here comes Mrs. Coulter, and she is a brilliant woman, as Lyra thinks of her, and she is going to be taken care of by Mrs. Coulter as her apprentice, which is great. And Lyra totally adores and loves Mrs. Coulter and her personality, and she thinks that Mrs. Coulter is awesome. And But before she lives, leaves Jordan College, she is given a curious object that is called the alethiometer that can tell the truth to any question. Of course, she doesn't know how it works, but that is basically what the Golden Compass, the title, refers to. It is the alethiometer. But, you know, I thought, then why isn't the title the, uh, the Golden Elysiometer? 
Well, I guess it doesn't have the same ring to, you know, Dun Dun Dun, the Golden Compass to Dun Dun Dun, the Golden Alethiometer. It's kind of too long in a, in a strange way. Although, the name is perfect. Alethiometer is a perfect, yeah. I'm pretty sure Alethi, that part, Alethio, that means like truth, I think, in Greek or something. A meter is, you know, measurements. So, uh, a device that can talk, that can tell the truth. It's a very, very nice way of making names. I gotta comment on that. And then, she finds out that Mrs. Coulter, Miss Coulter was evil. And that she was, behind her little sweet smiles and her pretty looks, she was pure evil. And she's a very horrible woman who captures children and severs their demons from them. Now, in this world, demons are a part of the body. If you even touch someone else's demons, that's a violation of privacy. But cutting and severing the demon from the children, that's like... That's like cutting a body part off when you're a child. That's barbaric. And that should not be allowed. But the Oblation Board, otherwise known as the Gobblers, a child snitching organization, is making these experiments in the Arctic about dust. How it attracts the uh, children and men. And oh god, it's kind of violent. And then Lyra, discovering this with her demon, Panta. Okay, I cannot pronounce this, so I will read it. Pantalimon, Pantalimon, otherwise shortened for Pan, and that's her demon, and yeah, and together they escape, and they are found by a group of gypsies, and these gypsies are super nice, and they take her, her, Lyra, to the gypsy king, and the gypsy king, Lord Fa, basically welcomes her to the group, and she is the niece of Lord Azriel, who had helped them in so many occasions, so she was welcomed. Also, the Golden Compass, the Alethiometer, could help them in their battle against the Oblation Board because they had lost many children to the stupid Oblation Board and they wanted to go and rescue the children. Yes. And so they journey to the Arctic. There, they, they, they recruit a fighting bear, a huge white polar bear with armor. The armored bears were known for their legendary fighting skills, and there Lyra hears that Lord Azriel, her uncle, is trapped and guarded by armored bears, and Mrs. Coulter herself and the Oblation Board has their base deep inside the Arctic. And while the gypsies travel, she is captured by those evil gobblers, Oblation Board, and she is captured and basically she finds out what they're doing and they're actually cutting the souls off from the from the children, they're severing that joint, and it's horrible. It's horrible what they did. There, it's like it's like t kidnapping a bunch of children, cutting off their arms for scientific purposes. It's it's as I repeated so many times. It's barbaric, absolutely barbaric. But Lyra, she knows when the gypsies are coming, and she sets up and manages to escape from that evil place where the Oblation Board has set up. And the witches. The witches are good guys. They fly around and they shoot arrows faster than what we would imagine J.R.R. Tolkien's elves would. And they fly around and they're good. And they have a prophecy about Lyra that we don't know clearly yet. Which is, uh, okay. And then, yeah. And then she escapes and they beat the Oblation Board. And in Lee Scorpsey, one of the main characters who is a Texan and who is good at flying balloons, they fly, but they were hit by evil monsters, cliff gas, whatever those are, I've never heard of those. And Lyra falls into the ground, and she's captured by the evil armored bears and their king. Now, Eorik Brinson, the armored bear that they had recruited, is a good guy, but he was exiled, framed, by, you know, he has murdered another bear, so he was exiled, his armor was taken away and stuff. And the bears, 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 bears. Now there's an evil crafty bear king, and she decided that she can trick the bear, saying that she is actually a demon, and that bears demons are demon, are human shaped. And she says that if 
the evil Eofur, who is a tyrant that has taken hold of the throne, if she fights Eorek, very similar names by the way, bears, and if they fight each other 1v1, and if Eofur wins, then she, Eorek's demon, diamond, will be his forever. And she is taking a very risky gamble here. But, thankfully, Eorek arrives in time, duels with the evil tyrant, and she wins, and he becomes the king of the bears. Who? Ray. But it is not over yet. For some reason, it is an incredibly long and complicated tale that I freaking love. And she next has to go up to see Lord Asriel. And Lord Asriel, she is such a commanding figure that he's basically just having a nice time in a big mansion on top of the... He's not a prisoner, he looks like a king. Uh, what did we do this entire book? Try to rescue Lord Asriel, so that's, that's a problem. And she, with her friend Robert, who is a minor character, and Lyra's old best friend the, from the good old days of throwing rocks at each other, and Robert, who was taken by the Oblation Board, that Lyra rescued. Done. And Robert and Lyra, they come to Lord Asriel's place, but Lord Asriel has other plans. He knows that if you sever a demon from a child, an extreme burst of energy comes out, and it will open a bridge between worlds. And Asriel, when she saw Lyra, what in the world did they send to my niece? And also, the gypsies had told Lyra that Lord Asriel was her father, Mrs. Coulter was her mother. So, plot twist. And, yes, yeah. Okay, and Lord Azrael basically killed Robert in order to open a gateway, and at this point we're very, very confused. Is Lord Azrael a good guy or a bad guy or in the middle? What is he trying to do? He's trying to kill the Christian god? What? What? <laughs> very confusing. And so Lyra basically goes through the, the bridge to the other world, and a bug ends, which was great. And... Wow, that was a great bug, and, and like, it has a way of telling everything so swiftly, and I couldn't, I just couldn't take my hands off the book, and it was great, and just a complicated timeline, that, like, the goal keeps changing, at first it's like, we have gobblers, there's gobblers around who kidnap children, we have to defeat them and find their secret lair and stuff, and at that point you're like, it's a, uh, it's a medieval slash medieval slash magical version of some sort of spy agency thing, and then it's not, <laughs> and then it's oh no they they're in the Arctic and it's a total fantasy now and we have to go there and rescue the kids. Okay, fine, and they go to rescue the kids, and then suddenly we have to open a bridge to another world, and then it's so confusing, but it's so great. It's like a new level of fantasy. I thought Percy Jackson and Aragon had complicated plots, well, jeez Louise, this is epic, and I feel like this is a little bit more level, more my level than the Lord of the Rings, because the Lord of the Rings was slightly hard to read, but this, some, this is something that I really, really enjoyed, and yet it wasn't just like, rip, I'm done, it was, it was something that I really chewed on, and really, I had to concentrate. And it was an awesome book, a must read, and like always, your book quester, Aaron Lee book quester, it is an awesome book, and yeah, you got to read it, I'm, I'm literally regretting why haven't I read this book ages ago, but to be honest with you, if I had read this a couple months earlier, I wouldn't have understood it at all. There you go, thanks for watching, have a great day, and read some books in quarantine. Great, bye!